whatever people do, they always have, a, always have a reason. They may not be aware of the reason consciously, but there's always a reason. If someone tries to commit suicide, there's a reason. If someone tries to hurt someone else, there's a reason. If someone is willing to work 18 hour days, there's a reason. If someone doesn't want to work, there's a reason. Now, here's the good news. Having dealt with literally tens of millions of people from hundreds of countries or more than a hundred countries to be accurate, I could be an idiot at this point and have to see there are patterns. There are patterns that'll make you angry and patterns that'll make you sad. There are patterns that'll excite you. There are patterns that'll make you grateful. The patterns that'll make you completely worried all the time. There are patterns that'll make you feel so absolutely certain you can run through an effing wall. Once you know what the patterns are, you can get rid of the ones that don't work and adopt some of the ones that do more often. And that's a good part of what we're gonna do the next few days to give you perspective. But the most important pattern to understand is why people do what they do. So as I told you, I've had a unique gift. I've had the chance to travel the world at this stage of life where literally the world is available to all of us in a few hours. But what I want you to understand is, everybody has a reason for what they do, but the good news is there's only six reasons. There are lots of different stories, but I can tell you by experience being around the world, there's only six reasons. And those six reasons are called the six human needs. And I'm gonna walk you through these. Now I need you to manage your state for the next few minutes because we're gonna go a little deeper on content, but we're gonna do it only so in the future for the next three days and somebody stands up, you're gonna look at them and you're gonna go, what's driving them? And I'm gonna ask you, which of these needs are driving them? Because once you know what drives somebody, you know how to meet their needs. Or you can predict their behavior and see whether or not they're the right corporate match, personal match, intimate match, because you have to understand it. So what are these six needs? They are not goals, they are not desires. If you travel with me around the world, you'll see every culture has different goals, everybody has different desires, but we all have the same needs. What are they? Number one is the need for certainty. Certainty. Now what the hell is certainty? Certainty is a survival need. We all need to feel certain that we can avoid pain and that ideally we can have some comfort. Why? Because continuous pain would mean continuous damage Continuous damage eventually means death. So the need for certainty is built into every human being. And I'm gonna show you now in the next few minutes, if you stay with me, and I really need you to, so make sure you stay, sit up in your chair and focused on this area. Because after this, we're gonna kick in gear again, but right now you gotta take this in. It'll be so valuable, not just for this weekend, but for your life. All human beings have the same six needs, so why do we behave differently? Because the only thing different in people is two things. We all have the same six needs, but we don't value them equally. Some people's certainty is the number one thing they value. And if they're certainty driven and you try to change anything, they freak out. They get fearful or they get angry or they get pissed off because what matters most to them is keeping things the same way where they feel like they're in control. Raise your hand if you follow. That's an example. Some people, they value love much more than certainty. Some people value certainty more than love. So even though they love you, if they don't feel certain, they won't open completely. Right, just as one example. So the difference in people, we all have the same six needs. The difference is which of the top two you value most out of these six? Because these top two determine your direction in life and direction, if you keep moving in direction, it leads you to an ultimate destination or destiny. So we wanna understand what your top two needs are. And same thing with other people. This weekend, when somebody stands up, often I'll say, what's driving them right now? And I want you to see, within a very short time, 8,000 people from 44 countries will all be saying the same thing. Because it'll be that obvious to you. You'll be a practical psychologist by the time we're done here. So now, if we know what these needs are, and the person values them differently, we also have to find out two people could have the same need, but they have a different belief about what it takes to be loved, or a different need about what it takes to be certain. Some people to be certain need $10 billion. Some people to be certain just need to pray to God. Some people to be certain need to feel like they have three perfect children and they're there every day. Some people that feel certain feel certain because I've always figured it out. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know I'll figure it out because I always have. You can get certainty from your past. You can get certainty from God. You can get certainty by working out intensely. You get certainty by eating food, too much food especially will put comfort in your body. If you overeat, all the blood goes in your stomach. You start breathing again. So we all need certainty. The only question is it number one, two, three, four, five, or six on your list. And the second question is, what does your brain say has to happen to be certain? Some people have certainty that's impossible to meet. The young lady over here who was sitting in the chair before we intervened had a blueprint that's never gonna be met. 
it literally would make her unhappy regularly. So we gotta know what needs you're after and what's your blueprint. How many got a feeling at least when I'm explaining it right now? It makes some sense to you, say I. Awesome. So the first need is certainty. How can we meet our need for certainty? We can do it in ways that are positive, neutral, or negative. I can get certainty in a heartbeat if all I wanna do is get really pissed off and freaked out about something. When you get angry, do you get certain, yes or no? You better believe it. So some people get angry all the time because it's their way to get certainty in a life that's uncertain. It has all kinds of negative side effects, but it works in the moment. So listen to me now. Most people meet their needs in a way that works in the moment, but not long term. So they feel good for a short time, like a sugar high, and then they drop emotionally, and they gotta do it again, whether it's food or smoking or drinking or whatever it is. So you can meet your needs in positive ways, neutral ways, or negative ways. So if I came along here and I said, what's your name, sir? Chase. Chase, Chase I wanna make a deal with you. How much do you weigh? 246, we're gonna weigh you in five minutes. He says he weighs 246. If you're within that range, I'm fine. Here's my deal. I will give you, I'm gonna put $50 million US cash tonight into an escrow account for you. They're gonna weigh you. If you lose 50 pounds tomorrow morning by 8.30 a.m., you will receive that 50 million, otherwise they get it back. Can you do it, yes or no? No? Sure you can. Take off a leg, take an arm, we can get your ass there. There's no question, Chase. Is the goal obtainable, yes or no? Is it achievable, is it obtainable, yes or no? But it's not sustainable, and that's how most people meet their needs. They use a drug or alcohol or food or cigarettes or something to get comfortable, to get certainty back. But the problem is it has side effects long-term. Works in the short-term, doesn't the long-term. Raise your hand if you follow, say I. So you could get certainty by overeating or smoking or drinking. What happens when you smoke a cigarette? Take a deep breath in and you blow it out nice and long and slow, full exhale. When most of you are stressed, how many have noticed that you either stop breathing or you breathe really shallow? How many have noticed this in the past? So you smoke a cigarette and in the moment it meets your need for comfort and certainty, it's killing you, but it works short term. That's how most people live their life. You can get certainty by working out. If you go on a run really intensely or you go lift weights and you push yourself and all that blood starts pulsing through you, do you feel certain, yes or no? And what's the downside? Zero. So there are ways to meet your needs that are empowering, neutral, or disempowering. The parts of our life we don't like are problems. Why would we keep a problem? We're all capable of solving it. Why would we keep a problem? The only reason you have a problem that's stuck around is because it meets some of your needs. Not all of them, or you wouldn't want to get rid of it. But enough of them that it makes it hard to give up. It's kind of like, who's ever been in a relationship way too long. Let me see your show of hands. <laughs> and how many knew it was wrong while you were there? Let me see your show of hands. So why the F did you stay there? Because of the uncertainty. Because, well, you know, I, you know I'm not thoroughly happy, I'm kind of unhappy, but I might be worse if I was totally alone. What if this is the best one I'm ever gonna get and I screwed it up? But what happened was most of you had that feeling, talked yourself back down into the relationship multiple times until one day you had a threshold where your brain went, it was painful in the past, it's painful in the present, it's gonna be painful in the future, I'm out of here. Who's done this before? Say I. I. So there is a threshold that we can find and if we find that threshold, we can break through it pretty damn easily. We can shift, we can get to where we really wanna go. So what I want you to get is of these six needs, we all find a way to meet them. The only difference again is which are your top two out of the six, and I've told you certainty so far, and what are your beliefs or rules or what's your blueprint and how to get that? Her blueprint was make please everybody, which is impossible, so it won't work. Raise your hand if you follow, okay? So let's take a look. What's the second human need? Well, first of all, you can get certainty in so many ways. You get certainty by praying to God. You can get certainty by doing a ritual the same way every time. You can get certainty by lowering your expectations, saying nothing ever works, nothing ever will, everybody screws things up. You'll lose your dream, but you'll gain your need. By the way, jot this down. People will give up their goals and dreams to meet their needs. People will give up their goals and dreams. They'll even give up their own values to meet their needs. 
I'll give you an example. How many of you in this room consider yourself to be an honest person, very honest person? Raise your hand if you consider yourself to be very honest. Raise your hand nice and high. Okay, drop your hand. Raise your hand if you lie. Let me see your hands if you lie. You can explain this to me, will you? <laughs> Here's how it works. See, in your mind, you know who you are. Why would someone lie who values honesty? No one told you to be honest, you wanna be honest. Because if you think being honest is gonna cost you one of your needs like love or certainty, you'll lie. You'll call it a white lie, but you'll lie. Who knows what I'm talking about? Now there's some people that never lie because they value certainty of always telling the truth so much. Right? It has to do with their rules or their belief structures. Does this make sense? So tell me something. You can meet the need for certainty so many ways, right? So here's the question, you can go ahead. <laughs> here's the question. What if you were certain every moment of your life what was gonna happen before it happened? What if you knew what people were gonna say before they're gonna say it? What if you could feel what they're gonna feel? What if, you could, what if you knew every moment before it happened what people were gonna say and do? In the beginning, that would feel really exciting. But after a while, if you know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, tell me what you're going to feel after a while. What are you going to start to feel? Tell me. What? Bored out of your mind. That's why God, in her infinite wisdom, gave us a second human need. <laughs> and that second human need is uncertainty. We have a need for uncertainty. We have a need for surprise. We have a need for variety. In fact, what's the phrase? Variety is the what of life? Spice of life. Now, how many of you in this room, raise your hand, how many of you in this room love surprises? Raise your hand if you love them. Say I. Bullshit. You love the surprises you want. The surprises you don't want, you don't want. You call them problems, don't you? So don't tell me you like surprises. You like the surprises you want. Here's my point. Can you meet more than one need with the same action or emotion or belief system? Yes or no? Write this down. Anytime, anytime your mind, anytime your mind perceives that doing something, anytime your mind perceives that doing something, believing something, or feeling something meets at least three of your needs. So anytime your mind perceives that doing something, feeling something, or believing something meets at least three of your needs, then you will become addicted to that thought, that feeling, that emotion, or that action. You can be positively addicted or negatively addicted, but you're gonna be addicted. Anytime your brain perceives that something you believe, do, or feel meets three of your needs, you'll get addicted to it. Now, I'm gonna show you why this is important. Let's look at two needs for a second. Is it possible to meet your need for certainty and uncertainty simultaneously? Even though they're opposite needs, yes or no? I'll give you an example. Who here has ever rented a movie that you've already seen? Let me see a show of hands. Get a life. Now, I've done it too. Why would we rent a movie we've already seen? We'd rent it, why? Because we've seen it before, so we're certain it's good, and we're hoping it's been so long we forgot enough that it'll be variety when we watch it again. Who knows what I'm talking about here? Say I. So you can meet both needs, but if you meet three needs, you'll become addicted to that behavior. Whether it's a good behavior or bad behavior, it doesn't matter. It'll be a positive addiction or negative addiction, but you'll be addicted. So let me give you, a, how do you get variety? You can get variety in positive ways, negative ways, or neutral ways. You can get variety by learning, growing, taking on a new goal, a new challenge. You can get variety through a conversation with a friend. You can get variety by praying to God. There's so many ways to get variety, aren't there? But you can also get variety in negative ways. You can smoke a joint, and maybe that's not a negative way, but it sure will change your state but it has side effects, right? During that time, you're not gonna function maybe at the same peak or understanding. Or some people use other things, cigarettes, alcohol, anything. There's so many ways to get variety. The question is, are your ways positive, neutral, negative, or empowering? How many follow? Because we all have ways of getting that variety, that uncertainty. So here's what I want you to do. Third human need is significance. The need to feel unique, the need to feel special, Yes, I hope that picture makes you feel special, <laughs> okay? The need to feel unique, special, important. Who has the need to be needed to feel special, unique, and important? Who do you think has that need? Who has it? Tell me who. What about people say, I don't want to be special. Do they still want to be special, yes or no? 
You bet your ass they do. The house protests too much. Now they don't want to be so special that you attack them. They might want to stay undercover, so to speak, but they still want to feel special. They want to feel unique. They want to feel needed. They want to feel important. So there are lots of ways to feel special. You can do it by working your ass off, taking huge risks and achieving something to feel special, or you can tear down everybody else that's trying to build something. Because there's two ways to have the tallest building in town. One is work your ass off, take risks, build the tallest building. The other one is blow up everybody else's building. And by the way, which one's faster? Which one's easier? Which takes less intelligence and less money? Tearing shit down, it happens faster. So that's why we've always had violence and we always will unless there's a consciousness change. If I live in a tough part of the community, I'm in the hood and you can walk through my community and you don't notice me, and I feel insignificant, I might take things into my own hands to feel significant. If all of a sudden I put a gun to your head, tell me on a zero to 10 scale, how certain am I you're gonna respond to me now when I put that gun to your head, zero to 10? 10 is absolute, zero is not at all. Where would you put it, quick? Yeah, 100. <laughs> is it true? But also when I put my gun to your head, how significant am I to you in your life, even if you didn't know me a minute ago, if I got a gun to your head, how significant am I, zero to 10? 100. I'm the most significant thing in your life, and a moment ago you didn't know I existed. And I don't need any intelligence, I don't need background, I don't need education, all I need is a gun and the will to do it. Oh, by the way, just in case there's not enough there to be an addiction, when I put that gun to your head, every time that happens, it's gonna be a different game. I know you're gonna respond to me, I know I'm significant, but what you're gonna say and do is different, so I get variety. So you meet three needs, but violence doesn't end there. Because the fourth human need is connection and love. And most people are too afraid to love because they've loved and been disappointed, or they've loved and then lost the love, and it was so painful, that now they settle for the crumbs of connection because that's safer. So it's a form of the need, but a low level of the need, but it's still part of the need, and we gotta meet it. So if you're going for connection and love, if I cut my gun to his head, on a zero to 10, I'm a 10 of certainty. I'm a 10 of significant to him. I'm gonna have a ton of variety. But are we also connected in a sick way, but deeply connected in this moment, yes or no? On a zero to 10, how much connection is there between our lives at this moment when I put the gun there? 100. How many follow this? Say I. So violence meets four of the human needs, and that's why we've always had it. That's why ISIS exists. That's why people do the stupid things they do as they do it to try to meet their needs. The biggest cause of violence though, if you'll notice, is 95% of the time when it's a terrorist, it's a male. Why is that? Because in the human nervous system, if you're masculine, testosterone is probably large in you. Whether you're a man or woman, if you're more masculine, you got a lot of testosterone. Testosterone is about dominance. It's about significance. It's about domination. And the higher that is, the more they want it. If they look at their life and they're not dominating and they get really frustrated, they'll do a final act. Men will die for significance. Women will die for love. Now, some men will die for love too, so you know. But biochemically, a female is wired to be able to nurture and to support human beings. We wouldn't exist if it wasn't for every woman in this room because we all came through one and we wouldn't exist. It, there's no man that can make this shit happen. But the women have, and the reason is because they have that connecting power as their strength. Now, can any man become more love-driven? Yes. Can any woman be more significance-driven? Yes. But our biochemistry leads us that way, which is why a terrorist will come up and do what they're doing and kill someone because all they give a shit about is domination, is that I'm significant and they want certainty in a world where they feel uncertain, and they want variety in a life that is incredibly boring in the middle of the desert where there's nothing, and no one's working, where you got 30% of the population unemployed. What am I gonna do, work at McDonald's or go kill people? Kill people feels more exciting right now. How many follow what I'm talking about here? Say I. Now, can you get significance in positive ways? Of course. You can be significantly more generous than anyone else and that generosity gives you a sense of significance because you know you're really a giver. You're not trading, you're not exchanging, you really are giving. And it makes you feel full. It makes you feel significant because you know the truth. No matter what you tell people verbally, you know what's true inside. And no one can mess with that. You can get significance by the way you dress. You can have significance by having more tattoos and earrings and more locations than any of us want to know. 
But the bottom line is there's a, you can know more about box scores and sports to be significant. Everyone finds a way to be significant. Most people find a way to be significant by having a significant problem. Why? Because if I'm really successful, you might like me for a while, but after a while, most people get annoyed with someone who's always happy and successful. Yeah, easy for you! Who knows what I'm talking about here? Raise your hand, right? But if you got big ass problems, who's gonna be upset with you? You're not competing with them. So you have huge problems and go, oh, I understand. But if you're doing really well, it's like easy for you. So most of us unconsciously learn to create big problems as a way to connect because it's the safest way to connect and not be rejected. Some of you do it like she does by trying to please everybody all the time. Thinking if I please you enough, then you'll come to me. You'll give me what I'm really wanting too, which is what she wants. But it doesn't work that way. It works sometimes, but not all the time and not even the majority of the time. How many follow here? Say I. So we have what needs so far? Number one is, nice and loud. Number one is? Certainty. Certainty, you can be comfortable. You can avoid pain. You can survive. You can be comfortable. Second human need is the need for? Uncertainty. Also need for variety or surprise. What's the third human need? The need for? To feel unique, to feel special, to feel important. Who has that need? Who has that need? Everyone. And the fourth need is the need for connection and? Most people settle for? connection because love is too scary because they love that it was so wonderful and it went away and they don't want that pain anymore so they want love but they settle for connection so if you can't get love or connection anywhere else buy a dog don't get a cat they're independent get a dog is it true you can be the dumbass owner you can not even feed them you can leave for five hours you can leave for five minutes and it's like you've been gone for six months they're so excited right so anyone can feel connection and love. You can do it through prayer. You can do it through good gifts. You can do it by dressing special. You can do it by having big problems. The only question in life is not whether you're gonna meet your needs. The only question is how. And is it obtainable or sustainable? Is it empowering, neutral, or negative? And if you wanna change your life, willpower never lasts. But when something meets more of your needs, it's effortless. If you wanna know what the biggest addiction is in our culture, it's not alcohol, it's not some form of prescription drug, it's not an illicit drug, it's problems. Because problems allow us to try to deal with our deepest fear that we're not enough and we won't be loved by saying it's not me, it's this problem. It's just that I have ADHD, it's just that I've been through this, it's just through. so most people meet their needs through problems. Unfortunately, they don't meet their deepest needs because up until now, we've described the first four needs, which are the basic needs of your personality. But what will, well, everyone, by the way, finds a way to meet these first four needs. Even if to lie to yourself, if you've got to work 20 hour days, you will find a way to meet your need for certainty, uncertainty, significance, even if it's just you have worse problems than anybody else, connection to yourself, you will find a way. But the final two needs are the needs that create fulfillment, and they are the spiritual needs, not religious, but spiritual. The fifth human need is growth. We've already said it, we grow or we what? There's no way around it. If your business isn't growing, it's dying. If your relationship isn't growing, it's dying. There are no plateaus in this life. Who's with me here? Say I. So growth is life. And if you want a one word key to happiness, I'll give it to you right now, because it's real obvious having worked with millions of people. Progress equals happiness. If you're not even where you wanna be, you're, you're still overweight, you're still financially struggling, you're still not where you wanna be in your career, but you start working out. You haven't lost the weight yet, but you start feeling better, you start making progress. Or you start to change that business, still not there yet, but you're making progress. Or change that relationship, or change your body, or change your health. Anytime you start making progress, your happiness will go through the roof. Anytime you achieve things and you don't set up something new to go for quickly, you'll lose momentum and in a short time you won't be so happy because the law of familiarity will come in and this thing that once was this big dream will now just be something that you're used to. So the purpose of a goal is not to get the goal. The purpose of a goal is who we become to achieve it. What you get will never make you happy. Who you become will make you very happy or very sad, depending upon how you approach it and what you do with your life. So our approach here is we wanna grow. 
And then the sixth human need is the need for contribution, the need to step out of ourselves. See, how many of you in this room, when something great happens, how many of you can't help yourself, you immediately wanna share that with somebody you love? How many immediately that's your first thought? Say, I. Why? Because you can only feel so much yourself. I don't care if it's sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever it is, there's only so much pleasure you can internally have. You wanna share that concert with someone. You wanna share that experience with someone because by sharing it becomes more. It's more than just you. Growth and contribution are our fifth and sixth needs. They are our spiritual needs. They are the needs that fulfill us. Everybody finds a way to feel somewhat certain, some variety, some significance, even if they gotta tear people down, some connection but very few people grow continuously and contribute continuously, which is where all the joy is. How many follow here? Say, I. So we're gonna make a couple distinctions, but first of all, can you meet somebody and in a few minutes start to pick up which needs might be driving them most, yes or no? Yes or no? Of course you can. In fact, I'll give you an example. I was flying, I don't know, this was probably five, six, seven years ago. I was flying the small plane across the country and I was being the pilot and I landed in uh, Kansas City. And I land in Kansas, excuse me, I land in Kansas. And I'm in this little airport in Kansas, and I get out of the plane, and this young man comes running out, and he's like so enthusiastic and so, just such a sweet, good soul. You know, you just you meet a like, great hit off this kid. And he says, what can I do for you? I told him, I'm, I'm just flying through, I just need to refuel. He goes, how much do you need? I said, just fill her up. He goes, no problem, I leave. As I leave him, come around the plane to walk up the steps to go into the FBO, the fixed based operation where I'm, stopping for the moment. I'm gonna go up and use the facilities and there's a young girl sitting on the stairs here and she looks really intense. She's gothic, you know, that goth makeup. She's got, I don't remember the exact number, but like 15 earrings on one ear, one through the nose, really intense looking little character. So I noticed her on the way in and as I walk up the steps, I walk but you know, by her and go inside and when I came back out, the steps are really wide. So I sat on the step just beside her, she's like one person away, and she looks up at me and goes, what do you want? I said, what do you want? She said, nothing. I said, nothing. And then we just sat there. She's like, you know, in her space. And I said, actually, there is something I'd like to know. I said, you don't have to tell me, but I'm gonna leave here in a few minutes, you're never gonna meet me again. Is that your boyfriend out there? She goes, well, sorta. Like she wants him to be, right? And I said, that's nice. I said, he seems like a really, really nice kid. He's not nice. He's strong, she tells me. I said, okay, well, I think he's strong and nice. She said, well, maybe he is. I said, you know, I'm gonna leave in a couple minutes, but I'm just curious. I said, um, how old are you? She goes, what does it matter? I said, it doesn't, and I'm about to leave, so why don't you tell me? She said, I'm 13 and I about fell over. I mean, this girl, I mean, 17 be the youngest I put her, totally made, you know, makeup made up, up in every detail, right? So I'm like, wow. She goes, are you surprised? I said, yeah, I'm really surprised. She goes, did you think I was older? I said, yeah. And I said, and that kind of saddened me a little bit for you. She said, what? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm curious, I'm gonna leave here in a few minutes. And she goes, you're curious about a lot of things. I said, I am. I said, how come, and I'm making up the number, it may have been 13, but it was more than 12. How, may, how comes 13 or 15 earrings? And she says to me, because everybody else has five. Now, if I don't tell you anything else about this young lady, what would you say is the number one need that's driving her at this stage of her life right now? Nice and loud, go. Which one, nice and loud? How many said significance? Raise your hand. Absolutely right, you can see it easily. but. People are driven by more than one thing. And as I'm watching her in this really tough ass approach and thinking about how she's adapted to be unique and significant, I look down and I see she has a keychain, and it's a Tigger keychain. You know, Tigger, the Disney character, Winnie the Pooh Tigger. And I go, cool keychain. And she goes, yeah. And all of a sudden I saw a little girl there for a second. And I said, Tigger, I said, where'd you get that? She goes, well, my dad got it for me. And she, all of a sudden, there's a 13-year-old girl there. It's totally amazing. And I said, really? She goes, yeah, I really love Tigger. I even have Tigger curtains. And I, I have a Tigger sheets. I mean, it's embarrassing, but I love Tigger. So tell me something. 
this woman's need. She meets her need for significance by doing what? Being gothic, being different than everybody else, 15 earrings, tough ass, makeup, but she's still a little girl and she has another need called certainty and comfort. And where does she get that? Tigger and her dad. And you can see it right there in front of you. After this weekend, you will never see the world the same way if you stay awake. Instead of seeing people's behaviors, you're gonna see their attempts to meet their needs. And when people do stupid things, they're just starving to meet their needs and they're finding something that isn't very effective or it's effective short term, but hurts them long term. And because you've done this, you can have compassion. How many of you have something on your list, more than one, where you're doing dumbass things to meet some of your needs? And even though it doesn't meet all your needs, it meets some of them, and so you keep doing it. Let me see your hands here. Say, I. So we want to shift that. The Tony Robbins Podcast is directed by Tony Robbins and hosted by Anna York. Carrie Song is our executive producer. Tyler Colbertson is our associate producer. Jamie Carvajal and Adriel De La Torre are our digital editors. Special thanks to Diane Adcock and Mary Buckheit for their creative review. Copyright Robbins Research International. Thank you.